Happy Wednesday. <clears throat> Thanks for joining. Um, we have uh, Asko Wei, our uh, senior um, economist for the California Association. He's going to join us in a few minutes over here. Um, so let me start the meeting. Once again, he's going to join in just in a bit. Can you see my screen? Calabas, uh, thumbs up. See my screen? <clears throat> Stephanie, can you see my screen? Thumbs up, just making sure. Cool, all right, now we can see it. Perfect, thank you. Um, so let's start with Holly. You happen to be right next to me. Okay. Go for it. <clears throat> Let me put my glasses on. <laughs> oh, be the change you wish to see in the world. Mahatma Gandhi. That's a good one. Uh -huh. Relevant to uh, November 4th, I guess, right? Yeah. Be the change that you wish to see in the world, 2020. Let's make the best out of it, whatever is left. Uh, if you think it can get uh, much worse, it doesn't matter, right? 2021 is gonna be, uh, they said, the year of the dragon by the uh, whatever calendar that you wanna you wanna make, right? So um, definitely been an interesting year. Right, but for some people, it's maybe it was the best year. So it's all about the mindset and what you want to make once again out of it. So looking forward for the, the next two months, finish strong and definitely plan even a better 2021. So thanks, Ali. Uh, shout out to our producers. Strong, another strong month in uh, between our offices. Uh, Coastal office, go team. Hey guys, good job. Shout out to all the uh, the agents, the solo agents, teams, groups. Uh, super strong month. Uh, Cindy, how many closings we had? The uh, units? Um, I think it's 84. 84. Yeah, that's amazing. I think October, probably the same or even more than last year. Yes. About that, yeah. So that's uh, congrats again. Uh, West Side picking up the pace. Uh, congratulations, residential, commercial. Good job, guys. Couple of teams. We had a couple of cappers as well. So keep it up. Uh, in Calabasas, congrats, guys. I see over there on the screen. Congratulations. Good job, everybody. Same, same thing like super strong month. I think about 100 uh, units or close to 100 um, last month. And this month looks even, even stronger so far so good job everybody um and i think that oh um stephanie she's right there behind you so give her a shout out <laughs> no she's not but hey mary <laughs> so so proud of her she's awesome she's kicking boot and taking names <laughs> congrats congrats and uh she she is a hard worker. She and she's a newer agent, mm -hmm. right? She's a newer agent. Uh, yeah. Yep. But about a year and a half or so, um, just jump, you know, full time. Um, you know, not stopping, and uh, looking forward to have another strong year with uh, with Mary. Congratulations, Todd. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Um, Oscar is not here yet, so we're gonna, I don't see him on the call yet. Let me just double check. In a second. You always send me the presentation early today, so. Uh, he said he was there on the chat. Oh, um, Oscar, you are um, using maybe the wrong link. You Sorry, I put, Oh yeah, you know what, hold on for a second. Let me see where you at. 
Here, I just promoted you to panelist. You got a promotion. <laughs> and let's give it a second. Asko, can you hear us, see us? Yes, I yes I can see you now. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I used the wrong link. I might I got I think I got one link uh, earlier today, and then I think you sent me another one uh, when we started setting up the meeting. So I must have used the one that was sent earlier today instead. Well, all good. Awesome. Hey, uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, it was kind of like a last minute. Uh, hey, Oscar, save the day. We need you. And <laughs> right now, with everything that's going on and the rates uh, uh, and the economy and the election, whatever. So we need some, uh, you know, good kind of stats, data, and, and you know, and you never. I mean, it was a last minute, and you were like, hey, you know what? Uh, I I'll do it. So thanks. I, I really appreciate you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I mean, I, I know that, you know, at the end of the year, we always want to get a sense of what the year is going to be like, well, for the rest of the year, as well as for 2021. So, you know, I happen to have the flexibility to do it today. So uh, why not? You know, and I, I know I've, I've talked to you guys before. So the last time we talked about, you know, the housing market, it was about what, four months ago, five months ago. Obviously, things are a little different compared to what we are now. Um, so I'm eager to share some infamous information with you guys and hopefully a little bit more positive information. So are we ready to uh, take a look at the market condition? All yours. All right, let me share my screen first. Give me one second. And thank you for sharing the, the presentation with me. I'm gonna share it with the uh, offices afterwards this afternoon. No problem. I'm, I'm always concerned about whether there will be any technical difficulty or anything like that. So that's why. I always have, I always prefer to send a copy to, um, you know, the other end so that if in case anything happens, uh, at least you have a copy. So let's get started. Um, I know many, we ha I have about 30 to 40 minutes, right? Um, so I, I think the PowerPoint presentation will be a little bit more than 30 minutes, but, uh, you know, hopefully this is good information that uh, it won't bore you down. Uh, but you know, right now, it's, it's as, I, as you guys mentioned earlier, the market is actually doing a lot better compared to a few months ago. So um, I'm gonna share some good information, um, insightful information, I should say, um, and let's go from there. Uh, first of all, you know, the presentation also will be posted on the CR website if you're interested, or you can always ask me at the end of the presentation, I have a slide that shows the, um, my email address. So feel free to send me an email if you have any questions. So let's get started. I know um, I've said it a, a few times already. Things are a little different compared to five or six months ago. I believe last time I uh, did the presentation here was maybe, I did a couple of times, one on residential, the other time on, um, on uh, commercial. Um, I think the last time I did a presentation was in July. Uh, in July, I probably still had May or June's data. At that time, you know, it was right around, you know, the the, the economy or the, the housing market or the economy got shut down for, you know, a few weeks or eight weeks or so. Uh, a lot of people, including, you know, realtors, we were a little uncertain what's going to happen, right? Um, and, and we just had, at that time, I think April and May, we had, you know, sales down uh, dramatically. Uh, but things got a lot better now. We have, in the last few few months or so, housing market started picking up. The economy started showing a little bit better uh, compared to the first quarter and the second quarter. And as well, as, and then the coronavirus situation also has gotten a little bit better. So I think I should start off with talking a little bit about the coronavirus situation because that's actually has been one of the uh, key variable and um, you know, holding the you know, economy back and also uh, the reason why we are doing Zoom instead of doing an in-person uh, presentation. So let's start off with you know, a, little, a little bit of information uh, about the coronavirus situation. Uh, this may not be the most uh, updated slide I updated yesterday. Uh, they probably have th some uh, information updated today, but this will do for now. Uh, Things have gotten a lot better, as I said, you know, as far as the coronavirus situation is concerned, as compared to two to three months ago. And, and um, if you look at the, uh, these are three graphs that shows you number of cases, number of deaths, and also the positivity rate. You know, if you look at the graph on the left-hand side, it shows that, you know, we have a lot of uh, cases in the last 
seven or eight months, you know, we're approaching 1 million, which is not a good thing. But, you know, if you look at the graph itself, the number of cases actually has gone down. This is the, this was the peak way back in July, mid July or early August, it was close to 10,000. That's how many cases that we have on a daily basis. That's very significant. That's right after we, um, you know, we open up the economy for a couple of weeks, things start getting a little worse, but you can see everyone's effort, put in their effort in social distancing, and we were able to keep this number of cases, daily number of cases down. The number of cases now is around 4,000 uh, as compared to eight or 9,000. Uh, but what we need to notice also though, is this graph here also shows that it's actually started climbing up a little bit. Um, we are going into the flu season. You have heard, you know, what the um, the uh, medical doctors and and, and they've mentioned that we're going into the flu season. Things are going to get worse before it gets better, uh, especially since we don't have the vaccine or a cure yet. So we we should we will continue to see a little bit of a climb in new cases. Now California has been doing better compared to some of the other states. Uh, so we we need to continue to do uh, the same thing as we have been doing to make sure we have this contained. And we have to make sure that we keep the number of deaths at the very low level. And at the very low level right now, of course, one death is more than, than we need, uh, but we need to keep our social distancing. The other measure that you want to take a look at that will give you an idea of how widespread the coronavirus is, is the positivity rate. The positivity rate is a number of people or percent of people who get infected uh, with the coronavirus. It is currently at 3.2%. Um, at the peak, again, in two, uh, two, three months ago, it was close to 8%. That's a threshold that the uh, state decide to whether to close down or shut down the economy or not. Thank God we did not pass that whole, uh, threshold. And from that point on, we actually start declining. Uh, right now, it's at 3.2, which is actually a very good number, but it is higher than what we saw a couple weeks ago. Uh, I think uh, at the low point, it was 2.6. So it's suggesting that we are actually started climbing back up again um, as we go into the uh, flu season, as the weather started getting a little cooler. Uh, so we need to make sure that you know keep that in mind. Now, as the um, as the uh, the COVID situation started subsiding, getting a little bit better, we also started getting uh, uh, we started seeing you know uh, the economy started turning back a little bit. But before we started seeing the economy turn back, we did uh, saw a significant decline in economic activity. Now this slide shows you the growth rate, the economic growth rate uh, uh, for the US. And um, if you take a look at these bars, the blue lines you know, above is, is growth rate about 0%. Uh, but you can see in the last three quarters, we have some volatility. You know, In the first quarter, when we started actually shutting down the economy, uh, we actually dropped and, and, and uh, started shutting down the economy in the last two weeks of March. It already caused the economy to go down. Take a look at the uh, bar here. It dropped by about 5%. Uh, what is 5% you know, compared to uh, the last great recessions? Take a look at what happened in 2008, 2009. We did drop uh, at around at 1.8%, 9% or so. So it's actually pretty substantial, but this is, this, that was just a, a prelude. If you look at the second quarter, it actually dropped 31%. That's even more significant. That's actually the biggest drop that we had in, um, uh, since Great Depression, going back to 1940s or 1930s or so. So that's significant. Of course, it is because of us shutting down for eight weeks or so, but we bounce back. The latest numbers uh, for the third quarter, which includes July through September, show that you know we actually uh, uh, had a bounce back in uh, sales and, and consumer spending and economic activity by 33.1%. So that's encouraging. Now, if you just look at this number though, 33.1 you know, and 31.4%, you might think, well, okay, well, we bounced back by about you know over 30% now. So we're back to normal, right? Um, well, it doesn't necessarily work that way because you kind of remember when we, st when we actually dropped by five and 5% 5 and then another 31%, we started at a higher level. And so it dropped by about, you know, total of 35, 36% in the last, in the first two quarters. And when we bounce back with a 33%, we're actually bouncing back from a lower level. So if you, if we compare it to last year uh, for the third quarter, we're still 
at the end of last year, we're still down by about three and a half percent, you know, as far as economic activity is concerned. So we're still below. Now, many economists uh, <laughs> expect that things are going to get better. And, uh, you know, the previous prediction before the release of the third quarter number show that, yes, things actually will bounce back by 30 percent. And most of them actually underestimated a little bit. Most of them are between 28 to 30 percent when we bounce back by 33. But if you look, take a look at the th fourth quarter number, the fourth quarter, which is the, uh, the, the um, activities, economic activity for from October to December, most of them believe that it is probably going to be a much softer um, increase uh, growth rate in the fourth quarter. Uh, mostly um, between 1.2% and you know, the highest is NAR with 8%. Um, uh, to be honest, I think it's probably going to be somewhere between three to four percent in my perspective. And there are reasons why it's much softer. For one thing, we just have a huge bounce back. But for another, a couple of things to, to remember, um, the we're going to the flu season for one thing. So uh, there could be a further slowdown in the economy because of shutdown. But also keep in mind, uh, many of you probably have heard that the uh, federal assistance for unemployment and the stimulus um, have actually kind of stopped. The federal assistance actually stopped maybe at the end of August or so. So people who are unemployed now, they do not get additional federal assistance from the national government. Um, so we might be actually seeing, you know, people cutting back on, on spending because of that reason. Now, granted, of course, you know, we have a better unemployment rate now, which we'll go over in a minute. Now, before we talk about that, let's take a look at retail sales. Now, when we talk about economic activities, a big part of it actually has, uh, uh, comes from re uh, retail sales and consumer spending. Um, now, let me get a little technical for just a minute, uh, and then I'll, I'll come back. You know, For the GDP, there are four components. Consumer spending is the big component. Consumer spending actually makes up about you know, 66 to 70% of the entire uh, growth rate of the GDP. So, And retail sales is a big part of consumer spending. Not the entire part, but a big part of it. So the reason why I want to tell you that is because if you look at retail sales, how it has been uh, doing, this is the latest number that I have. It might actually have October number. I don't, I don't have that on hand right now. But if you look at this, uh, the blue bar, the dark blue bar here, this number, if you compare it to the beginning of the year, the retail sales actually level, level was actually better than what we had earlier this year. That means, you know, we're sort of back to, you know, the, uh, the, the high level. Uh, pre-pandemic, right? So that's great. That's great news. But retail sales, as I said, you know, it's only part of the story. And even within retail sales itself, we have to actually dissect it a little bit to see, you know, how things are actually doing. So if you take a look at retail sales, if you don't include uh, restaurants and bar, take a look at this green line here. You take a look at the screen line. This, compare, this is the uh, growth rate compared to 2019 average. Look at the retail sales, excluding that uh, uh, food and restaurants and, and drinking bars is actually up by about four, four and a half percent or so. Pretty, pretty decent, pretty uh, decent growth. That's great. But if you actually look at the sales, the retail sales part that it only includes restaurants and bars, you know that, you know, because of the social distancing measures, a lot of uh, restaurants and bars are still closed. That is actually still down by about 15% as of August, as of September. So we are we still have a segment uh, that are actually doing um, not as great as before. Uh, if you take if you want to know what segments are actually doing better and what segments are actually not doing as great, you can take a look at some of those stock prices of different companies and you'll get a sense. Um, here I listed you know a list of companies uh, that uh, are either doing better or doing way worse compared to before. Now, some of the companies that actually enhance um, people's ability to interact with uh, others without actually doing a person to person contact like Zoom, like what we're doing now, they're actually doing way better. If you take a look at the stock price of Zoom, it went up by about 531%, significant increase. But other, there are other companies as well, Amazon, Netflix, those enhance people to you know, either buy things online without going to a store, or you know, watch a movie online without going to the theaters. These are actually doing well. Uh, going to a gym, you can't go to a gym, you buy a Peloton, right? That, those increase significantly. 200% for Peloton and Amazon and Netflix increase 40, 43 and 55%. Significant increase. 
but so there are some some companies that are doing really really well, but on the other hand, there are some companies that are not doing as as well. Namely, those companies that uh, requires person to person interaction. Restaurants, Darton restaurants dropped twenty two percent, but more more significantly is people are not going on a cruise, people are not traveling, right? So let's take a look. Carnival cruises dropped seventy one percent in terms of their stock prices. Uh, and uh, people are not going to uh, travel, like I said. So American Airlines dropped significantly as well, more than 50%, not going to theme parks, 48% drop in price. So you get the story. There, is a, there are a lot of sectors. There's a huge sector, service sectors, as well as retail sectors that are not doing as well. And then that's the reason why we still see a high level of unemployment. There are a lot of people that are still not employed because theme, theme parks and all those theaters, they're not opening. They have to let some uh, employees go, and that's why we still have a very high number. Now, it's not as high as before. In April and in, in April and May, the unemployment rate went up significantly. Uh, before pandemic, before the uh, uh, pre, uh, pandemic uh, 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 situation, we had unemployment rate at below four percent. That's a very very low rate. That's record low rate. But because of the shutdown, we went up, we soared and surged significantly in April went all the way up to 15% for the US. And for California, it actually shot up even more to 16 and a half, 16.4%. Now things got better in the last few months um, with the uh, people starting getting used to um, the shelter in place orders, people start figuring out how to actually still go out and buy things. The unemployment rate actually has come down um, at the U.S., uh, it actually has come down to a uh, to eight percent, seven point nine to be specific. And for the state, it's still double digit, but it's uh, way below, you know, the sixteen and a half. But if you look at that number, that number is still high compared to um, the uh, pre-pandemic level. And we probably will stay at a high level for quite some time, especially since we have a lot of uncertainty about what's going to happen with the flu season, right? So uh, a lot of economists believe that in order to get back to the 4% or so or below, we probably won't get there until at least 2022 or 2023. My guess is probably more like 2023. Uh, so it's, gonna, it's a long way to go. And part of the reason why it's going to take a while is because the recovery actually has been kind of slow with uh, the initial uh, boost in uh, job growth. Now we dropped about 22 million, we lost about 22 million jobs in two months. You know at the beginning in, in April and May. And then we start uh, getting back by about, you know, eight or nine million or so, but we're still very, very slow. Take a look at the pace here. It's recovering at a slower level compared to before. The team. Now, let me show you a snapshot of California, the state labor market. You can see, as I mentioned, at the state level, we dropped 2.6 million. We're closing costs and cash out. Well, I don't know about at the same out. time, Closing costs yeah, are slightly so different because back with only about on one million or so. Year and by we're still short year. about 1.6 million. Um, so we recovered maybe about one third. The loan costs. So why did two thirds more to go? 8,100. I see some, I hear some background noise in the background. Maybe we should, uh, if, if for someone uh, who's talking in the background, maybe we should mute that for now. Um, just so we have a. Uh, about that? Yeah, she's, she's out of the meeting. You, you're good. Okay. Got it. Thanks. Um, I just want to make sure that people can hear the presentation. Um, so what about the market? Uh, I talked about the economy a little bit. The economy um, has been improving, but actually not doing as well uh, as, you know, the uh, housing market. The housing market, to, be, to, be, uh, to show you some encouraging news, actually has been doing very, very well. Now, six months ago, I wouldn't say that because there, had, there, there were a lot of uncertainties six months ago, and we actually went down uh, significantly in April by about 30, uh, by about 50%. At one point, I think it got down to 35 to 40% in terms of sales. But things have gotten better. Better Turn around a little bit. I'll show you the actual his history uh, in a minute, but here's a snapshot. Here's a snapshot for California. Um, if you take a look at sales, this is the sales number for September, which is the latest that we have. We will be releasing October number in maybe about uh, two weeks or so. Uh, if you take a look at this number, 
the sales figures actually increased by 21%, more than 21% in September. That number, 489,000, is actually the highest that we have seen in the last um, 10 years, over 10 years. Now, we used to, in, in, in uh, May, we were actually down for, actually, I should say, for the first half of the year in June, we were actually down by about 13% for the first half of the year. But take a look at this number. The year to date now for the first nine months actually is only down uh, 4%. Now I said only because it's a significant improvement compared to you know, what we saw three months ago. But um, it's actually going to get better. I'll show you some numbers later on for October, November, and December that things are actually will continue to pick up and we probably will see a, uh, at the end of the year, we probably will be virtually unchanged compared to last year, thanks to the second half of the year, the growth in the second half of the year. But we have, so we have a lot of demand, but I know many of you probably will agree with me that we just don't have enough supply, right? Um, and and we, we do not have the supply that we need. If you look at the unsold inventory index or the months of supply, we only have two months as of September. Um, we use, and that it's actually is a decline of 44, 45%. And what do you have? What what do you do? What, what happens when you have very tight supply and high demand in home sales? Well, for one thing, properties kind of sold, you know, very fast, get get sold very fast, and you know, properties stay on the market for a very very short period of time for only eleven days in, in September, and also it put upward price upward pressure on prices. Home prices at the state level actually increased to a record number to over seven hundred thousand. Remember, th imagine this is a statewide median price of 712,000, and that's an increase of 18%. So let's go into a little bit more detail. Um, sales gain, now uh, here's the, uh, the historical uh, chart. You can clearly see here are the, um, the latest sales figures. Uh, this is for this year. You can see there is a def definitely a dip here before bouncing back. Um, if you heard, you've heard of um, recovery, people calling recovery called V-shape or U-shape and uh, a lot of different, alphabets. Uh, but if you take a look at the California housing market, now economy may not have experience of V-shaped recovery, but take a look at the housing market. It definitely looks like a V-shape to me. It dropped down significantly to the bottom by about 45% or so, and then it bounced back by uh, uh, so significantly for the last few months. Uh, at this point, it's actually in September, it actually went up by 21%. What about um, individual price segments? Now, the 21% is a great increase in terms of sales, but not every price segment actually increase by that much. And some actually increase even more. Uh, for the lower price segments, the segments between zero to 300,000, that actually continue to decline. And you might ask why, you know, we have an economy that's actually uh, turning around a little bit. Uh, it seems like the housing market in general is doing better. Uh, but here's the thing to remember. Yes, in the lower price segments, I showed you earlier that we have very tight supply in general. But in the lower price segments, it's even tighter. Uh, we have always have some tight supply issue uh, in, in the lower price segments for affordable uh, homes. But also keep in mind, I think I mentioned earlier that yes, we have uh, different uh, uh, service sector, different sectors in the economy that's actually doing, uh, at a, growing at a different level. For those people who can work from home or can actually uh, use remote working, they may not be affected as much. For the service sectors, it actually has been uh, having a bigger impact on the service sectors. And many who work in the service sectors in the hotel industries and in tourist uh, industry, and also in the, in the uh, um, uh, restaurants industries, uh, their income tend to be a little lower compared to some of the other uh, people who can work from home or remote working. And, and their household income in, in, in that respect is actually lower and their uh, demand for housing typically is for the lower price uh, uh, housing. So. It affects the economy, not turning around for the service sectors and for the low income uh, sectors, affect the housing demand in the uh, lower price sectors. And that's the reason why we're seeing a little bit more, a fewer demand in housing, a fewer uh, housing demand in the lower price segment, but also because of housing supply as well. But if you look at other segments, other price segments, they're growing all by more than 10% or 10% or more. The upper price segments, in fact, 2 million plus, in fact, increased by more than uh, by double by triple digit, which is very very encouraging, and that probably will continue. If you look at the trend here, the blue line, the dark blue line, is the um, upper price segments, the highest price segments of two million plus. 
it continued to go up. Now, we are moving into the end of the year. It looks like this is going to continue to improve, but probably uh, we may not have another 118% or so increase in sales, but who knows? Um, the market is really, really, really hot right now. And part of the reason is because of interest rates, which I'll go over in a minute. Before we get there, let's take a look, quick look at what we can expect in the upcoming months in October and maybe even uh, September, uh, November or so. Pending sales from September suggest that we do have another strong month in October. Uh, pending sales shows at the state level an increase of 26%. I don't think it's going to increase by 26% in October in terms of closed sales. Probably will show a, a double digit increase though, 15 to 20, 15, uh, 17% or so in October. I think um, for November and December, we will continue to see some strong gain on a year over year basis. Also because of you know, what we can see from the consumer sentiment. We sent out CAR, we sent out on a monthly basis, a uh, survey, a Google poll, and ask people, is it a good time to buy or is it a good time to sell? Um, you want to gauge an idea of how they feel. And we get that, uh, for, we have been doing this for the last two years or so. And you can see the, on the right hand, on the left hand side, good time to buy in California. It's not a huge number, but if you compare it to the year before, it's at 28% as compared to 22%. People are feeling a little bit more optimistic uh, buying right now compared to a year ago because of the low rates, partly because of the low rates, I should say. Uh, and what about people who think that uh, for people who want to, who would think it's a good time to sell? Well, it's actually still at a high level. At one point, it was very, very low because there were a lot of uncertainties about what's going to happen, how, how people are going to show their homes. So at one point during the pandemic, we were actually down to about 30% or below that. But right now we're at 56% as compared to 52%, which is an improvement, definitely an improvement compared to before. Um, and as I said, you know, it's because of interest rates. Many of you know, uh, we, are, we have average 30 year fixed rate is currently at 2.89 or maybe even lower than that. And some of you who have been in industries for 20 years, 30 years or so, you probably remember what the interest rate was in 1980s or 1990s, right? Uh, it was what, six times higher than what we were at? Like, you know, at 15% or 16% or so, um, it, it would be lucky to get below 10% at that time. But, um, you know, at that time it was flight, uh, the economy was um, struggling with inflation. There are a lot of things going on at that time. So, you know, we're at a record low right now. We've never seen a rate that low before below 3%. But the other part of it, while uh, the, for the reason, the, the other reason for why we are seeing some uh, increase in sales is also because we lost a couple months of um, activities and people are catching up. But also uh, a lot of, uh, usually the home buying season is from say, um, what, uh, April to August or so. It's now has been stretched out a little bit more. The home buying season uh, is at least stretching out to September, maybe even October. And that's because 